Guys, it is finally time we take a look at No Man's Sky once more in 2021. A ton of things have changed in the past 12 months with a lot of updates and new features along the way that have kinda made my previous beginner's guide from 2020 to be a little bit redundant. There's new features, there's a new gameplay loop, there's a few things in there that I wanna discuss in this video, which is why I'm bringing you all the ultimate beginner's guide updated for 2021. As always, hit that like button if you enjoyed this and let's jump right in. All right, coming right up, I want to address one of the criticisms that I've seen from the previous video that we posted last year. And that was the fact that it didn't feel too much of a beginner's guide, but rather an advanced way for a player to play from the very beginning and get stuff in the shortest amount of time possible. And back then I thought I was doing the right thing, but I was wrong. And there were a ton of people in the chat telling me that they simply did not understand many of the systems because I hadn't cleared them up previously. Well, here is me trying to go as specific as possible about the things and the big concerns a starting player should have, starting with the inventory and the best practices when it comes to managing it from the very beginning. So the first thing that you will want to do as a fresh player is to move all of your upgrades from the general tab into your technologies tab. For one simple reason, it's because this will help you clear up your general inventory, which means you will be able to stack more items in it. And I would even argue that the tag tab is exclusively used only for that, for these upgrade modules. I would do the same by the way for your ship's inventory, which follows up the same logic. And I would also focus some of the starring inventory upgrades on your tag tab, just so that you can stack your upgrades in it and not affect your general inventory. The second inventory tip is to use low stack items into your cargo slots instead. Now, low stack items are usually the craftables that only stack up to a maximum of 5 or 10 and in rare cases 20 in your general stab. Well, if you transfer these into your cargo slots instead, the cargo slots can hold up twice of the same amount, which essentially means you clear up two of the inventory pieces from your regular inventory by using the cargo for this instead. The third and final tip here is the fact that you can quick split and change the stack size of your stacks in any of the inventories by just using the designated buttons right here at the bottom, so that's gonna be W and S to change the stack size and C to quick split any stack in half. So what this means is that you can more easily transfer items in different inventories, especially if you only want to transfer a portion of them. And even more so, it's very helpful in the refiner when you only want to refine a certain amount of pieces into a different element and not the entire stack. Moving on to number two, let's make resource collecting a lot more efficient, especially since you will definitely need that in the early stages of the game. And we will do that by by using the overheat mechanic of the multi-tool. As you use the multi-tool mining beam more and more, it will eventually overheat, but at the same time as it starts overheating, it also starts dealing a lot more damage. You can notice that by checking out the bar at the top right corner of the screen, but also paying attention to the mining beam color. So the more your beam overheats, the more the color intensifies from green to yellow and finally to red, but at the same time, it will deal more damage and as a result, it will will collect resources way faster. So what you will want to do in this case is to stay around 90% of the overheat so that you can resource collect at an optimal rate and pretty much half the time you normally need to collect many of the resources in the game. Now the next tip is going to be about the portable refiner, which is what you will be using to turn and combine certain elements into different elements and then use those into crafting. I will not go over an extensive list of these in this video, but I will focus on an early trick to get easy access to a ton of ferrite dust. So instead of mining them from rocks, it is much simpler to use something called rusted metal that you can get from cargo drops on most planets out there. They kind of look something like this. It's these green boxes that give you access to a pretty hefty reward, but more important, it gives you access to that rusted metal I was talking about. Once you get it, you can pop it into your refiner and transform the rusted metal into ferrite dust at a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning that you can transform about 100 of that metal into 200 ferrite dust and it is much simpler than just farming it on planets. The next two resources are going to be the sodium and oxygen and I like to call these burner resources because you will use them to replenish your HP and your shields. The best way to get these early on is to just 
farm them from Hazardous Flora, which on the ground level are going to be these exploding, whipping, and the Venus fly traps. These on the ground level only give you oxygen, by the way. Meanwhile, the underground Hazardous Flora, which looks something like this, will give you sodium instead. I would also pay attention to the red and yellow patches that you can oftentimes find randomly on planet surfaces, especially the sodium patches that will give you a ton of sodium that you can use to power up your shield and survive anything the game has to threat you early on. Moving on to number 3, let's make traversal way faster and way more fun. And there is a trick in the game that everybody needs to learn right now if they haven't already, which is gonna be the melee jump boost. Just like what the name implies, this is going to use a combination of buttons, mainly the melee attack, the jump button and the sprint button. So here is what you need to know to get started with this. First of all, if you press the melee attack and immediately follow up with a jump, it is going to put your character in this pretty strange animation that will also move it forward a little bit. Now if you do this while sprinting, this will make you enter that melee jump boost which will make you traverse and cover distances way easier than ever before. The second traversal tip that I have for you guys in the start of the game is to use something called deuterium plants, which are these blue ones that you can see oftentimes on planet surfaces. Reason being is because while you have these for 10 seconds straight, your jetpack will simply not consume any fuel at all, which means you can jetpack freely for that amount of time and cover a way higher ground than pretty much anything else in the game. I would also suggest maybe keeping a little bit of the fuel just for the landing, otherwise you might risk dying. And that is especially true if you play on permadeath or on survival, where you will take increased fall damage. The final traversal trick that I have for you in this category is going to be the infinite jetpack trick. And yes, that is actually a thing since day one in 2016. Essentially, if you get close to any surface that is vertical, you can essentially jetpack against it and the game will not consume any jetpack fuel at all. It's basically an unstuck mechanic if you want to get out of a very deep hole and even more so if you want to reach very high up places as long as you stay very close to that surface with your character, you will not consume any fuel. I would suggest going into the first person view since that makes it way easier. Moving on to number 4, while this isn't a big game changer, this is going to present you quite a nice quality of life upgrade and I'm talking about the quick bind actions and settings that I'm about to show you. So this will mostly work on the PC since you have plenty of extra buttons to use when it comes to like performing emotes or like calling your ship or maybe changing the camera perspective as you can quick bind the quick menu actions to the number bar onto your keyboard. Some of my most used quick binds are as follows. The first one is changing the camera perspective both for my ship as well as for my character between the first and the third person perspective. With just the press of a button I can just do this since I can quick bind this and not waste time going through the inventory menus and do it from there. Another one is for swapping multi tools especially if you have multiple versions like a few ones for combat, a few ones for mining, you can quickly switch between these by just using the number bar on the keyboard. And the rest pretty much goes for like the fluff, for the emotes that you can unlock in the game, especially if you tend to play with other players and want to do a quick emote, and even more so for the photo mode, if you like screen archery and more important, if you're playing on the higher difficulties and want to scout ahead with just the press of a button. You can definitely do that and maybe find a cave where you can find shelter and not die from the extreme weather conditions. Coming up to number 5, there's a few tips and tricks that I have for once you unlock your ship and the tutorial points you towards repairing it and then taking off from your first planet. The first one that I suggest is to go ahead and change the control scheme in the control settings from tethered, in case it is like that, to locked normal. This is the main reason for why you see me using this so easily and why it flows so well, it's because I have full control over where my ship heads and not have to drag the mouse cursor how it is with the tether controls. Another one that I recommend is to just go ahead and farm a big asteroid field for the very first time you head over in space. Mostly it is for the tritium that you will need to power up your engines and fly in space with, but you get access to silver and gold and sometimes even platinum from many of these asteroids, which means that is a pretty good source of income very early on in the game if you want to buy certain stuff that you will need 
need in the main story or to upgrade your character. Moving on to number 6, once you are done with the ship, eventually the game makes you create your very first base, you will unlock the base computer, which is something that you can place almost anywhere. As long as you don't really claim the base, you can take it back in your inventory and move it somewhere else, which is pretty convenient. Now to craft a base computer, you will need that chromatic metal, which you get by refining copper into it. In the early stages of the game, you can actually skip a step or two when it comes to discovering your first copper deposit and crafting your base computer by simply salvaging your ship rocket launcher instead, which will give you plenty of copper in order to transform it into the chromatic metal you need to craft the base computer in the first place. Now once you've placed down the base computer, you will want to also yeah, unlock some other base parts to make things a lot more convenient for you. And the most important early on are going to be your teleporter and for that you will also need an energy source. Early on the game points towards the biofuel reactor which is really inefficient which is why I recommend to immediately try to invest points into something like the solar panel and maybe even a battery to store it during the night. But in order to unlock these you need something called salvage modules. Now these modules can be acquired from almost any planet out there from something called buried technologies that you can see on your scanner looking something like this. When you're close to one, simply use your terrain manipulator to dig it up, take it and then get a few dozen of these to invest in some of the early strategies that I've talked about. You can also sell them by the way at a profit if you want to just farm money early on but they were a little bit nerfed in the past year or so. Moving on to number 7, let's talk about the space anomaly and some of the stuff that you can find on it. Eventually the main story will bring you to the space anomaly which is kind of like the main central player hub where you get to meet other players, ask for help as well as do special missions and get special rewards. The most important missions right here are going to be the Nexus missions which you can find at this terminal in the middle of it. Now there are two very important missions right here that you need to pay attention to. The first one is going to be the weeklies. These will reward something called Quicksilver and the weekly gives you the highest amount which is going to be 12 100, but you can only do them once a week. The other ones are gonna be the dailies. These are much shorter, a lot easier most of the time, but they only give you about 250 Quicksilver. They also stack up to three times, which means that if you didn't play the game for three days straight, you will see these three missions being stuck right there at the top and you can do them, but everything else on top is gonna be lost. So if you wait like four days, you're still only going to see like three missions possible to do. Now, why do you wanna do these missions? Well, it's for the Quicksilver, by far the most rare resource in the game and you can only use this exclusively at the Quicksilver Merchant also on the Space Anomaly. Now he sells some of the best items in the game when it comes to customization, he sells emotes, he sells like base parts and decorations, also many of the armor pieces and the head pieces and also like the decorations for your ship including the ship trails among many other things. So your end game is probably gonna be about doing these as fast as possible so that you can get those cosmetic rewards. But there are other NPCs on the space station that are pretty useful. One of them is Helios and Helios is useful for well one main reason in the early game and that's because he gives you nanite rewards early on if you give him creature data. Which is why the next tip on the list is to scan everything on planetary surfaces. No matter if it's a creature or not, if it's a odd looking one, go ahead, scan it and try to complete these as much as possible. Now it gives you both milestone data as well as creature data which means you can give it to Helios and he will give you some of those nanites as a resource. Ares is the next one and Ares is also a vendor but we will focus on that in a different video. In the meantime what you need to know is that if you transfer milestone data to him which are these ones right here he will also further give you more nanites that you can use to unlock upgrades and boost up your other gear. Now with with those nanites most of the time you will head right here on the space anomaly and unlock many of the tech upgrades right here for your ships, for your multi-tool, for your jetpack, for your main suit and you will probably want to do that but I recommend holding off instead for a little bit because many of these upgrades can be acquired for absolutely free and who 
doesn't like free stuff. Which brings me to the eighth and final point on the list and that's gonna be to complete the base expansion quest line for yeah all of the free base and other unlocks that you can get on top. So this is a quest line where you get to recruit a number of NPCs like a scientific one, an armorer, a base computer scientist and all that kind of stuff and if you complete their chain of missions they will all give you these blueprint rewards on the way that normally cost thousands of quicksilver to buy and some of them are even inaccessible from other areas of the game. Oh and on a final note I also recommend paying attention to your base computer archives. They will decrypt about every one and a half hours and every time they do that they will give you a free blueprint and sometimes a free upgrade module and this will be done up until it reaches 100% so it's gonna be done over the course of maybe multiple days depending how much you play every 90 minutes or so it will unlock something new for you that you can get for absolutely free and not waste resources in order to get them but this is it with the ultimate beginners guide in 2021 I really hope I covered everything this time around this is usually the route that I follow and hopefully it is gonna be the same for you thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.